All right. What we're going to talk about today is Jesus Christ magnified the law. Jesus Christ magnified the law. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 21. Let's start there. Let's start there. All right. Um, we need to go over this topic. Reason being, uh, a lot of our people, too many of our people are under the illusion, disillusion, that Christ did away with the law. Or he made light of the law and made provision for you in his death to do whatever it is that you would think is righteousness, what you think is okay or acceptable to God. And that's not the case. That's not the case. In fact, Christ came to teach you how to better teach all of us how to better keep the laws of God, which is righteousness, than we had previously before, say, uh, Jesus the Christ came as Jesus the Christ on earth. So in the time of the prophets, in the time of Moses, Christ came to teach us even more law than what we find in the Torah. All right? So let's start there. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 21. Uh -huh. The Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. So the Lord is, and that Lord is all uppercase. That means the most high God, right? It says the Lord is well pleased for his righteousness sake. Go ahead. He will magnify the law. He will magnify the law. The he here is Jesus the Christ. He would magnify the law. So when he comes, right, this is a prophecy of Jesus the Christ. When he comes, Jesus the Christ would magnify the law. He would magnify the law. Meaning, what? What do we do with a magnifier? We make it large. We enlarge it. We make it more visible. The things that you couldn't see in it, he made it to where you can now see it. He explained the things more finely than Moses, more finely than the prophets. All right? That's why he came. Lo and behold, is not to do away with what God always told us we have to do. It was actually to teach us how to do it more perfectly. Let's get that in um, Matthew chapter 5 and 48. Real fast. All right. Matthew's 548. Matthew chapter 5, verse 48. Mm -hmm. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. This is Jesus the Christ. Jesus the Christ said, be ye therefore perfect. What's the therefore? Go back up to, what is it, verse 17. Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah, he stated, be ye therefore perfect. Watch this. Verse 17. Think not. That I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. So Christ said, think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. What did the prophets teach us? They taught us the laws of God, the principles of the Most High God. That's what they taught us, right? So Christ himself said, think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets, right? Read. I am not come to destroy, mm -hmm. but to fulfill. But to fulfill, meaning to do exactly what they prophesied, not only of him, but also what they prophesied of the law of the law and the covenant and the redemption of God's people, the blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. All right? Now but jump back down. Now that we have some context of the therefore that Christ was talking about. So because he came not to destroy the law or the prophets, read. Verse 48. Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Christ himself said, be ye therefore perfect, just like God in heaven is perfect. He says nothing different than the prophets. All right? Let's jump over to uh, 2 Peter chapter 1. And we're going to read. We're going to do a little bit of reading. We're going to read from 1 to 8 first, and I want to kind of dissect that a bit. All right? Read. The book of 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 1. Read. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. So this is a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. So Peter was taught by Jesus the Christ. He's the chief apostle. Right? Read. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Read it again. Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. To them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Read. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Okay. Read on. According as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. All right, so what are we talking about? All things that pertain unto life and godliness. Those are the things that Christ came here to do. And what did he come to do? We read it in Isaiah chapter 42, verse 21. He came to magnify what? The law. The law. So these are the things, things that pertain, uh, that were given to us, that pertains to life and righteousness. Read on. 
through the knowledge of him that have called us to glory and virtue. And who is that? Read. Whereby are given unto us as seeding great and precious promises, uh -huh. that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Come on. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Through lust. That means the things that we desire. Because that's why we come up with the doctrines that tell us, even though Christ never said he, he, he came so that you can do all the sin that the prophets told you you shall not do, right, in the name of the Lord. Christ said you shall not do just like they said, right? But read on. Read that again. I'm sorry. Verse 4. Uh -huh. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Come on that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. That if you keep these virtues, if you keep these uh, uh, things that pertains to the Lord and righteousness and life, we also shall be partakers of the promises, the kingdom of heaven, eternal life, immortality, rulership over the nations. Read on. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world. But, you, we, but we must escape the lust of our flesh. That's the corruption that is in the world. Adultery, lying, stealing, covetousness, hating each other, envy, malice, strife. Read on. Through lust. Come on. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue. Come on. And to virtue, knowledge. And to virtue, knowledge. Now, what is that knowledge? Where are we at? Um, verse, uh, read on. We're going to read on a little bit. Verse 6. Come on. And to knowledge, temperance. Uh -huh. And to temperance, patience. Come on. And to patience, godliness. Uh -huh. And to godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, charity. Come on. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither, neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, what's the knowledge of our Lord Jesus the Christ? Remember in John chapter 8, he said, I speak the things which I have heard of my father. Let's get that real fast. It's not in my notes, but... Let's get that real fast. John 8, start at, start at verse uh, 40. The book of John, chapter 8 and verse 40. Mm -hmm. But now ye seek to kill me, Come on. a man that have told you the truth, which I have heard of God. So Christ said he heard the truth, and men sought to kill him for that. But the point is, he heard that truth, or he speaks that truth, which he heard of God himself. Read on. This did not Abraham. This did not who? This did not Abraham. Again, Christ did not come to do away with the law or the prophets, Abraham being one of them. Read. Ye do the deeds of your father. Uh -huh. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. Read. We have one father, uh -huh. even God. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, ye would love me. If God were your father, ye would love me. Watch this. For I proceeded forth and came from God, uh -huh. neither came I of myself, uh -huh. but he that sent me. Come on. Why do ye not understand my speech? So Christ said, why is it that somebody cannot understand his speech? Would did Christ speak the righteousness of God? Why is it that somebody wouldn't understand it? Read. Even because ye cannot hear my word. Come on. Ye are of your father the devil. Read. And the lust of your father ye would do. Which is what? Sin. Sin. The lust of the devil is sin. The lust of man is sin. Read. He was a murderer from the beginning. Come on. And abode not in the truth. Read. Because there is no truth in him. When he speak of a lie, he speak of, of his own. Come on. For he is a liar and the father of it. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. Uh-huh. Which of you convinces me of sin? Come on. And if I say the truth, why do ye not believe me? Come on. He that is of, he that is of God heareth God's word. So he says, he that is of God heareth God's words. What was Christ speaking? The word of God. The word of God. Where in the word of God does it tell us to sin? Christ just explained that those are the deeds of, the, of Satan. He just explained that. He said that the things that he speaks is the truth, which he heard of uh, the most high God in heaven. Let's go back to where he was in, in 2 Peter. The book of 2 Peter. Come on, fam. We got to start think. We got to think. We really got, especially as these days get more and more and more and more evil. We have to escape the lust of our flesh, which is fed to us by this world constantly. Constantly fed to us by this world. Go ahead. Read on. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 1, verse 6. Come on. And to knowledge temperance. Come on. And to temperance patience. Uh -huh. And to patience godliness. So what is he talking about? He's talking about maturing in your spirit the longer you keep what? The knowledge of God, which is the commandments of God. We're gonna, I'm going to show, I'm going to prove that too. Read on. We're going to read down to verse 8, then we're going to get Malachi. Come on. 
and to godliness, brotherly kindness, uh -huh. and to brotherly kindness, charity. Come on. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right. So remember what Christ said will make somebody unfruitful in his words, meaning you can't understand the, the words of God. You can't understand the works or the, 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 the conversation that, God, that we see of Jesus Christ in the Bible. It's because ye do the deeds of Satan. You must keep the commandments to understand it. Let's get that in Psalms. Let's get that in Psalms real fast. And then we're going to get Malachi. You must be keeping the commandments to understand them. You must be. All right? Read, on, read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. That what? That do his commandments. We must keep the commandments of God to understand the Bible when we read it, to understand why Christ came. What did he mean he came not to do away with the law or the prophets, but he came to fulfill it? What does all that stuff mean? Right? Go back. I mean, go to uh, Malachi chapter 2. Let's get that real fast. So let's find out. What is that knowledge? Let's be plain about it, right? Let's be plain about it. Maybe this is the beginning of your studies. Maybe you, you, you've just heard of, of this. Uh, uh, we must keep the commandments, all right, that are listed throughout the Bible, not just here or there, right, because we see Christ address the, the two great commandments, and we think that he's talking about uh, something other than the commandments of the Torah, the commandments of God throughout the Bible, and he's not. He's abbreviated them in those two commandments. Just as we're reading in 2 Peter, just as we read in Matthews when he told you himself, he didn't come to do it with the law or the prophets. But for some reason, we've been taught and we believe that Christ came and did away with the law. Makes no sense. All right, read that. What's this knowledge that we keep reading about? Go ahead. Malachi chapter 2 verse 7. Uh -huh. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Come on. And they shall seek the law at his mouth. So what is the knowledge? The laws of God. The laws of God. And whoever it is that you go to, to, to in hopes to teach or learn knowledge, it should be the law. That's what you should be looking for them to be telling you. If it's not the law, run. 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 All right? Uh, go back to where we was in first in Second Peter, I'm sorry, chapter 2. And we're going to read on from 9, a few more verses there. And then we're going to get some examples of Christ magnifying the law. Let's understand what that meant. Let's understand what he's going into with that. Yeah. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 9. Uh -huh. But he that lacketh these things is blind. But he that lacketh these things are blind. Lacketh what? The brotherly love kindness. A lot of us are, and our people are too evil and malice and, and, and malicious to even sit down for a minute and hear somebody out. So y'all, you can't even, you, you, you can't get to step one, for a lot of our people. And we were taught that through slavery. The people who spoiled, the people who destroyed our nation, they taught us how to murder each other by what? Murdering us. They taught us how to hate each other by what? Hating us to this day. And those are the, the nature and the behavior that we take on to ourselves. We got to stop that and we have to be patient. And we have to seek the truth without, the, without mingling it with the lust of our flesh. All right? Read on. And could not see afar off, uh -huh. and have forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Uh -huh. Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. Read. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fail. Read. Fall. Read. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what happens. That's what happens when we keep the knowledge of God, which is the commandments of God. That's what happens. The laws of God is the knowledge of God. You're reading about that in the New Testament. Christ did not come to, come to die on the cross so now we can be stupid and evil. He came to magnify knowledge. Now let's get that Hosea 4 and 6 first and foremost. Let's set the tone with this. Why are our people destroyed? And we think that we're not. We go to, we, because we, we can go to church and buy a, 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 a fancy costume. Most of us call a suit nowadays. And not to insult anybody, but just to put things into context, all right? Uh, we, can, we can go buy a suit and, and, and go into a building, and um, nobody necessarily teaches us about what's written in the Bible, and we think ourselves something by doing that. And namely, those are the only qualifications that, that deem you fit or, or worthy of eternal life. Rulership of the, a king is not dumb. 
A king is not weak. A king is disciplined and wise, has great knowledge to judge the entire world. That's what a king is. But for some reason, we, Christ came, died on the cross so we can be dumb and undisciplined, evil as hell. That makes no sense at all. But it's what we accept in Christianity. We accept that as a, as a, as a motive of Christ, all right, for some reason. Uh, where are we at? The book of Hosea. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. Come on. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Come on. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. So our people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Right? What knowledge is that? Thou shalt not kill. What do our people do? We, kill, we are murderous, malicious, hateful, evil uh, uh, people. That's what we are. That's what we do. To, our, to ourselves and each other. That's what we do. This is the knowledge that we are destroyed by. We complain about these other nations killing us and all that. Yeah, that's, that's bad too. But you can't complain about somebody else if you're doing it to yourself. You can't complain about somebody else being evil to you if you're evil to yourself. You can't do it. Come on, my people. We got to wake up. This is foolishness. But the, this is the knowledge that we lack that destroy us. God said, thou shalt not kill. God said, thou shalt not steal. What our people do? We rob each other. We kill each other to steal from each other. That's what we do. Thou shalt not commit adultery. What do we do? We commit adultery. We name ourselves Mr. Steal Your Girl. We make the other nations millions by making songs, singing and rapping to each other, calling each other bees and hoes, niggas and all type of words. And we, 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 for some reason, we think that Christ came, died on the cross, so that that can be okay. It makes no sense. And because we accept that as knowledge, we are destroyed. Because the knowledge that God said we are to have is the knowledge of the laws. Thou shalt not. And those laws require discipline. Christ came to show us how to walk and live a disciplined life full of wisdom and knowledge. That's what you read in the Bible. Let's, let's finish that and then let's get some of these examples of Christ magnifying the law. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. And that's why we're still here in captivity in Babylon the Great. That's why. Because we reject the knowledge of God. We still, got, thou shalt not kill, we kill. Thou shalt have no false images. What we do, we put a white Jesus that we all know. We all know Christ ain't a white man, but for some reason we put that idol. We, put, we all love the cross. We all love to wear the cross, tattoo it all over us, hang it on the walls in our house and in our churches. We love to do that. Even though God said don't, we love to do it. And he said, I'm going to destroy you because you will not stop. You will not stop. So as you pray to the Lord or you ask or you question God and why he allows these things to happen to our people, it's because we lack knowledge. And even when we learn it, we don't want to discipline ourselves to follow it. And that's why we are continuously destroyed as a people. Read on. Was that it on that? Uh, no, sir. Read on. I will also reject thee, uh -huh. that thou shalt be no priest to me. Because we're supposed to be the priests of the Lord. That's what we're supposed to The blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans were originally and are supposed to be the priests of the Lord. But if we're priests, especially of the Lord, what must we have? The knowledge of God. The knowledge of the Lord. Read on. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, uh -huh. I will also forget thy children. Uh -huh. that's, that's it, sir. All right. So what's going to happen to us, to our children when we, when we, when we leave this place? Same thing. Destruction. Here we are in Babylon, 400 plus years. Here we are, still here, as God said, because we continuously reject his knowledge. Now let's get some examples of Christ magnifying the law, not giving us excuses, not telling us it's okay to partially do what he said for us to do throughout the Bible. No, but to fully do it. As he said in Matthew 5, 48, be ye therefore perfect. That means you are commanded to be perfect. As God is perfect. Let's get that. Um, let's go to, uh, let's get an example. Let's start with Matthew chapter 5. Let's get the law of adultery. We brought that up, and that's one of the main things that plague our communities. All right? Why, don't our, why do we have such a high divorce rate in our, uh, uh, of our people? Why do we have such a high single-parent household rate amongst our people? Why? 
because we don't honor the laws of God, the knowledge of God that says, thou shall not commit adultery. Which, is, which means breaking the laws of marriage. Watch this. So this is Christ teaching us and magnifying the law. Watch what he says. Watch this. Matthew chapter 5, verse 27. Mm -hmm. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time. Watch this. Thou shalt not commit adultery. So Christ says, thou shalt. You've heard that it has been said of them of old. That was the law of, of, of uh, the prophets, right? That was what the prophets taught us of the law, right? Thou shalt not commit adultery. Read. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her. Uh-oh. Christ said, hold on. He says whoever looketh on a woman to lust after her. This is before the act, the physical act. He said whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her. Come on. Have committed adultery with her already in his heart. Christ said you've already done it. Why? Because you didn't purge your thoughts like we just read in 2 Peter. You didn't purge and escape the lust of, your, of this world in your mind. You allowed it, therefore it became the physical act. This is Christ magnifying the law. Nowhere do you find it's acceptable for us to break the commandments of God and then blame it on Jesus coming to die. Nowhere do you find that in the Bible. Read on. 29. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out uh -huh. and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish. Come on. And not that thy whole body should be cast into hell. Right. Go back up to uh, verse 20, verse 19. Or is it 20? Verse 21. Or jump down. Yeah, 21. Watch this. Verse 21. Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, uh -huh. thou shalt not kill. Thou, now what is Christ talking about? First he addressed killing, right? Which adultery is also a very malicious act. Adultery more, more times than none destroys the life of not just those two individuals, but our entire generation. These are the things that Christ, this is Christ magnifying the law. He's, he's, he, uh, he's at the root of the issue, which starts in your mind. Go ahead, read on. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Read it, read it again from the top. Verse 21. Mm -hmm. You have heard that it was said by them of old time. Read. Thou shalt not kill. Uh -huh. And whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. Uh -huh. Watch but this. We've all heard that. Thou shalt not kill. Right? That's one of the Ten Commandments. We know that. Right? Watch this. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry. So Christ says, but. I know y'all heard that, but I say unto you, right? Watch this. That whosoever is angry with his brother will. So hold on, where is anger? That's an emotion. Again, what is Christ doing? He's magnifying the law. He's telling you where that act of murder, of killing, started. In anger. That's in your mind. That's in your spirit. That's in your heart. That's where it started. This is Christ magnifying the law. We read this, I tell you what, man, in Christianity, we read the Bible with, with our eyes wide shut. Because Christ explained, this is very, very, this is very plain. The only way you would mistake it is if you don't want to do the laws of God to begin with. If you see no value, no profit in the laws of God to begin with. That's the only way you could just read past this and jump and think that we can break all these laws and, 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 and commandments and wisdom of God. Watch this. Read on. That whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause uh -huh. shall be in danger of the judgment. What judgment? The judgment of death. The judgment of murder. Like he just addressed. Like he just addressed. But what did Christ, what did Christ address? The root of the problem. Watch this. James chapter 4, verse 1. James chapter 4, verse 1. This is where he taught his apostles. He taught his apostles, no, deal with the root of the problem. The root of the sin, not what you see in the flesh. No, 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 no. That had to start somewhere. It had to start somewhere. And this is the wisdom, the knowledge that Christ brought to us before, to, to help us and guide us from sin itself. When you identify it in your spirit, in your mind, you say, nope, that's, I know what that is. That's, I, now I'm angry. And why am I angry? Because I like my brother's car, and I, don't, I want it, and I hate him, so I don't think he should have it. And I, it's this feeling in me, but Christ identified it. He addressed it. I don't have a cause to feel that way about him, 
So that means what? I'm evil. I have to stop. Not after I murder my brother or steal from my brother or say something evil to my brother or set him up with some evil like that because this is all that happens in our communities. No, before all of that, I check myself. I correct my own spirit. That's Christ magnifying the law. That's why he came. Read that. James chapter 4 verse 1. Read. From whence come wars and fightings among you? So he says, so whence, from whence come wars and fightings among us? Where do those things come from? Watch this. Come they not hence, even of your lusts that war in your members. It said, all this stuff that y'all go through, that y'all do in your communities, adultery, rape, murder, stealing, killing, all these things, where did they start? In your members, inside of your mind, inside of your spirit. That's where they started. Just like Christ is addressing. Just like Christ is addressing. He came not to do away with the law. He came to fulfill it. And when he would come to fulfill the law, he would magnify it. Leaving us without an excuse. Finish that and then go back. That's the end of that, sir. All right. So um, I want to keep going, but we're going to wrap it up right there, family. I pray that you all learn something. Christ did not come to do away with the law. He came to magnify the law. He came to magnify the law. All right? Matter of fact, let's get 2 Peter chapter 2 and 21. He came to magnify the law, and he did it in his life. And that's the footsteps that we must follow, his same exact footsteps. If he didn't sin, what make you think you can sin? What make you think that? Even if he died for you to sin, him not doing so, right? And he, called, he said we're heirs together. Wouldn't that be hypocrisy if he did what he taught us not to do or gave us excuse to do, that's hypocrisy. It makes no sense. That is crazy. Read that. Come on. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 2, verse 21. Read. For even hereunto were ye called, uh -huh. because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, uh -huh. that ye shall follow his steps. So where is the hereunto that we were called? To walk just like Christ. To keep the laws, statutes, and commandments of God. To receive eternal life as Israelites. Not Baptist, not Methodist, not Catholic, not Christian in, in any guise of Christianity, but as Israelites, keeping the law, statutes, and commandments of God in the faith of Jesus the Christ, our Messiah. All right. With that, we're going to say shalom. I pray that y'all got something, Israel. All right. This has been another 15 minutes with the captains. I'm Captain Yuanathan. What is the nation? <laughs> Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models. Oh!